Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I wanted to talk about Tails 3.9, which was just released, and I want to talk about Tails 3.9 for internet privacy. So, of course, Tails is an acronym for the Amnetic Incognito Live System. This is a great distribution for internet security and privacy as it never stores anything, it never writes anything. It's a very good system. However, it does have an easy option for persistence. So the latest release does come with it, some extra bonuses uh, in that um, some of the features is now you can install additional software and where you used to have to install all the software anytime you load up your, your persistent drive. Now you have the ability to run this. I'll see if I can get this running in this video. Um, so you can actually add additional packages. Now, of course, you have to be very careful adding anything to Tails that's not already there because the applications in Tails were curated for maximum and ultimate privacy. But they did want to make it because Linux, the heart of Linux is that you can use and create your own system. And so they wanted to give you that ability. The other thing that they've added that I believe this is also new from somebody who does use Tails is that now Veracrypt is enabled in Tails by default. So if you are utilizing Veracrypt to uh, decrypt things, then you can do that. You used to have to decrypt everything through Lux. So this is actually a good benefit as well. I personally don't use Veracrypt. I use Lux. Um, but a lot of people do. And a good benefit of using Veracrypt is it is cross-platform, whereas Lux is not. Um, and so they've upgraded a few other things, uh, some package updates. Most of the other things, uh, they did increase the uh, Tor browser to 8, which is based on Firefox uh, 60 ESR, which is based on Firefox Quantum. Uh, they upgraded Thunderbird up. They upgraded Tor to uh, 0.3.4.7 uh, release candidate. Uh, let's see, hardware support. Now they do have... Um, 417 to fix the foreshadow, but this is also the Linux kernel that has spec. I did not get a chance to look into if spec has been completely disabled or compiled out of this. I don't know the answer to that. If spec is something that is concerning you, of course, I believe that will be removed in 419 or 420. Some people are telling me 19, some people are saying 20, and I've not investigated the matter thoroughly myself. Um, there are some problems they stopped, fixed Enigma setup. I've never seen that one. Of course, I usually use Tails as, as just a, like a live key. I barely install it. We're actually going to walk through the installation process today, though. Um, show Spinner when starting it. Uh, Tor browser, again, for browsing document. Offline, Synaptic, and root terminal, even when no administrative password is yet. That's actually a, a good thing because if you needed to install something, you would usually have to go in and enable a root password. Um, link to upgrade documentation, hide reinstall option when the USB stick is too small and correct the size of the USB stick. Um, sometimes, sometimes tails um, can be upgraded if you have a previous version. Sometimes it can't. If you are upgrading, just make sure you save everything on that persistent drive just in case you don't want to wipe out any important data. Starting tails 3.9 from DVD is twice as slow as earlier releases. That sucks. Um, and to upgrade automatically from 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, RC to 3.9. So you can upgrade everything. Just make sure that you are making a backup of that persistent drive, even if it's doing it temporarily uh, for a little bit. Um, all right, so that is what it is. So let's go ahead and boot this guy up. And I'm going to do the never, 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 ever do this. Um, but we are going to actually boot this in a, uh, in a virtual box. Uh, Most of the reason you don't want to boot it up in a virtual box is because Tails is not really designed for that. Uh, if you do need to run it in a virtual box, what you are going to want to do is you want to use Hunix instead. Um, Hunix will also give you access to the Tor nodes, um, and it's, but it's actually designed to be running in a virtual box rather than Tails which is really designed to be running separately. So you will see a warning when I boot this up. However, you can use a virtual box if you do not have access to extra USB keys um, to actually install it. And hopefully we will be able to get this installed. Um, I am just about maxing out all of my USB ports. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see if I can get this working. I did double check, make sure I have USB enabled on my virtual box, which it is. Uh, so I should be able to install this on my USB stick. 
Make sure that you have USB keys laying around for tails. This is also very handy to have one of these that goes on a keychain so you can carry it around on a keychain with you, particularly if you're using a persistent drive for things, emails, things like that. So you could actually go to a buddy's house, use their computer with your own tails install using their persistent drive, check your emails, whatever else you want to do. Um, now, of course, anytime you're accessing the Tor node, you want to be very careful about logging into any accounts. Any account you log into is going to de-anonymize you unless it's specifically designed as an anonymous person account. So don't log into the Google account that you log into on everything else because it's going to de-anonymize you. You have to be careful of that kind of stuff. I use things like this if you're looking up some medical diagnosis or maybe you're researching products that you don't want to see ads for for the next all eternity. It's great to use Tails for a feature like that. We also use Tails on some things. Uh, actually, I use more or less cubes on some things um, that I was doing for a uh, for some activist groups I was doing things on because you have to make sure that uh, you know when security uh, is needed, security is indeed needed. All right, so here we are on the Tails startup screen. So this is what you get where you can start Tails, you can shut down, you can pick your language, your keyboards, your formats. Then clicking this plus key down here will enable you to set an administrative password, which is off by default. Um, Mac address spoofing, which is on by default. Um, and network connection, which is direct. So if you're connecting to this and you definitely don't want network, you can actually come over here and disable all networking inside of here. Um, you can configure Tor to a proxy. I'm actually going to set a easy user password just in case I need it here. Um, and then of course I have the accessibility things over here. I can turn on high contrast zoom, large text screen reader, all sorts of things. We have our audio controls and our power switch over there. All right, um, so we're gonna go ahead and start Tails with what we have and then we'll just do a quick walkthrough of this part. All right, <clears throat> let this go, and there we are. Now, this is the warning that we are on a non-free virtual machine detected. Again, do not use this for uh, for anything that you're expecting privacy through a virtual machine. Um, you want to make sure that uh, you're doing this separately. So what I would do on this computer is rather than run it through a virtual machine, is I'll shut down the computer, turn off all my drives on my IC dock, and then just use my USB key that uh, you can't sh see me showing you the camera because I don't have a camera turned on right now. All right, but here now that we're logged in, the other notification we got is adjusting the Tor, or at first is adjusting the clock settings. Notice that the clock settings do not align because what they do is one of the extra means of extra security in Tails is it's going to align the clock with the exit node of Tor. All right, so then we get the notification that Tor is ready and then we have the notification up here in the uh, system tray on uh, upper, um, uh, upper right side of the screen or you'll see the Tor is there and then we can open the Tor onion circuit. So if you're concerned about being on a compromised node, you can actually see what all of your nodes actually are. So you can go ahead and look at that over there. Uh, we have our places down here, which gives us access to all of our different things. And then we have, of course, our applications. So out of the box, now we're running right now on a live system. So we have uh, the favorites. We have the Tor browser, Thunderbird, Pigeon, KeePassX, and Terminal. We have enough utilities here, text editors, files, uh, GTK hash. Uh, we have GIMP, Inkscape, uh, Scribus, LibreOffice, scanning tools, uh, Electrum, Bitcoin wallet, MUT. I've never heard of MUT. Uh, Onion share. This is a very nice way to share files anonymously. We use this in the activist group I was doing. Um, we have an unsafe browser should you want one. Um, Office with the full LibreOffice suite. What is MUT? I'm not familiar with MUT. Come here, MUT. Uh, is that a mail application? Nah, no. All right. Apparently, it's a. I don't know. Somebody tell me what MUT is in the comments, please. I have no idea what MUT is. Okay. Um, booklet Imposter. Uh, we have Poe Edit. Clearly, that allows you to edit Edgar Allan Poe uh, poetry. So. Uh, LibreOffice, we have Audacity, Bersario, PTV, Sound User, Sound Recorder, Trevar, uh, Traverso, and uh, Videos. We have a variety of system tools. Uh, let's see the additional software. This might be new. Okay, so I would have to, you can configure this, so I would have to install Tails on the USB stick 
and then create persistent storage. So, um, and then there is our basic utilities. Of course, here's your system monitor to see how much uh, we're using resource wise. Looks like we're running about one gig, which is actually not all that bad for GNOME. All right, uh, universal access, other tail things you can configure. Um, so here's our installer. So let's go ahead right now and I'm going to plug my USB drive in. Okay, and then now I have to come down here into the virtual machine and I have to tell the machine to install, uh, to plug this into the virtual machine here, which is this drive. Okay, so now that that is there, I can come down into my Tails menu and I can install Tails. Now, uh, hopefully this works. All right, so now I can clone the current Tails, which will clone the current one that we are running, or I can download the ISO. Uh, extra paranoid people may wish to download the ISO unless you've completely vetted yours, which I have. Now it's picking the only location. Notice it's not picking the hard drive that is on this virtual machine. It by default will not look for hard drives. It will only look for USB drives. So click the install. All data will be lost. That is just fine with me. So now we're going to run the, um, we're going to go ahead and run the, the uh, installer. So that's probably going to take a little bit of time. So um, I'm going to jump back on over to the comments and see what people are saying. And then we'll come back to this. So what I'm doing here is generally the process is you boot up Tails on, on, uh, on a live key on a USB drive and then you install it on a, onto a separate USB drive. So you generally say two USB drives or you want a, um, a DVD drive and then that. In this case, what I'm doing, since I know my system's pretty well secured and things like that and I audited my uh, Tails installer that I just did, what I did is I booted Tails into a virtual machine and I'm using the virtual machine with a USB pass-through to install it on a USB drive. Now we're going to boot this guy up. I'm going to spam my F12 key uh, so I can boot off my USB drive. Okay, now I'm going to go to my hard drive and we're going to look at the kitty. <laughs> I'm gonna come back over here as this, as this does its its thing here. All right. Alrighty. Now we are booted up. We should get our Tails boot up screen here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a uh, just a generic admin password right now. And we're gonna add that. And we're gonna go ahead and start Tails. The kitty is really trying to uh, go chasing my tail over here. He's batting at my. USB drive just off of the camera view there. Here we are on the main system. The first thing we want to do is we want to configure a persistent drive. So we're going to go into the applications menu and under tails we want to configure persistent volume. All right, so what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to encrypt the rest of the drive that's not being used. Um, and then we need to, it's going to give us a, um, the ability to, uh, basically you'll have to encrypt that. So. In persistence has consequences, must be well understood. Tails can't help you if you get it wrong. All right, so we're going to go ahead and enter a password here. And we're going to hit create. And then this is going to create our uh, persistent volume. So now anytime we boot this up, we're going to have the option to open this guy up, open up the persistent volume, or to not open up the persistent volume, whichever uh, happens to be the case. All right, so now that we are on our configured uh, persistent volume, now we have configuration. Do we want to keep files? So this will allow you to keep files, which you can come back and forth and come on to. My apologies again for the crudity of, of this. Um, it's just, I mean, unless someone wants to pick me up a capture card, can't do any better than, than this. All right, so browser bookmarks. Do we want to save browser bookmarks in there? Um, yes, no. Network connections, do we want to save any network connections? Uh, this is very handy, of course, if you're taking your device to regular places um, where for internet access. And then additional software, I think that this is a new one. Um, I think part of this is new, part of this is old. We're gonna go ahead and turn that on and click my settings. And then of course, printer configurations. All right, so here's additional settings. Um, so we can install extra software by, oh, I clicked it twice. 
sell extra software with Synaptic Package Manager or apt on the command line. And then you can set this up so that anything that I do is going to install on the persistent volume, I believe. We'll test that out here. Thunderbird, you want to save Thunderbird settings. Um, this is one of those careful ones because it depends. This may demask you. It depends on if you're utilizing email in a way that is uh, linked to any other account or if you're using it just on Tor. So keep that in mind. Uh, here's your G-Rings configurations, configuring your Bitcoin wallet. So if you're using this for Bitcoins, um, this would be a, a good thing to do. Uh, Pigeon, SSH clients, and dot .files. Uh, system link every home file on directory on the dot .files directory. All right, so let's go ahead and say that's good there. Now we're gonna go ahead and find our, um, is Synaptic on here or not? There we are, there's Synaptic. All right, so I have to enter my super secret um, authentication there. All right, um, could not, uh, yeah, I probably can't do anything because I'm not installed on the, I'm not on the network. Um, do I want to get on the network here? Ooh, you know what? This computer is Broadcom. I don't think I can get on the network. Um, I would need to, uh, I think all my USB ports take up too. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to actually test that out on this computer. I'd have to boot up on my other computer to test that out. So in theory, anything we install with Synaptic at this point in time, because we've configured our persistent volume, um, then uh, anything there is going to be saved. So if I can go back and reclick the configure persistent volume again, and this will allow me to make changes to the settings that we already made. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to boot this guy. I'm going to reboot the system, and so I'll show you what it looks like when the con uh, persistent volume um, is booted. So here we have our startup. So now we have to enter our passphrase in order to get our uh, decryption. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to enter my passphrase, and now that should be unlocking persistent storage now. Now it says persistent storage is unlocked. Restart Tails to log in to lock it again. So now I can start Tails. Anything I've done in my persistent volume will be retained, um, and uh, but anything else that I do will not be stored. So anything I do on the web browser won't be saved in any caches or histories or anything like that. And uh, we should have a a good solid persistent drive up here. So here we are, and then of course I can come back down, configure my persistent volume, and uh, my apologies, I didn't add software. I, this computer has a Broadcom modem, so I can't um, I can't log into um, log into the internet without uh, adding an extra USB or uh, a USB stick to this for um, configuring the internet. But anyway, you do have the option to um, to save the data. So additional software when installing. So you can turn this on or turn this off. If you turn this on, then it's just going to automatically save, uh, reinstall anything that you've installed previously. Um, my guess is it's going to save all of the apps data and everything onto your configure uh, persistent volume and then reinstall it from there. So that is how to set up Tails, how to install Tails, and how to configure the persistent volume. So if this video was helpful for you, continue uh, consider supporting the channel. You can check me out on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. That's T-O-M-M. You can also find the other ways to help support the channel at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. And check out my shop at shop.switchtolinux.com. So thank you for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.